Free Drone Ads If Pat Broker had taken charge of Scientology when LRH passed away instead of David Miscavige, how different do you think Scientology would be today? Well, this is a funny question because this was actually the subject of a recent Facebook discussion uh, in a uh, group that I'm a member of where people who were around back when the brokers were busted, they were talking about this time period and they were talking about the consequences of, of David Miscavige having taken over. I think this was in response to Leah's recent show about David Miscavige. And I, of course, wasn't there. So everything I say is based on you know, conjecture of, uh, you know, of my own and other people's that I've listened to or heard or talked to, um, and the stories and testimonials of people that I've heard who were there at the international base at the time. And the opinions are varied. But my take on it is that um, I think if a benign person had taken over Scientology, and there was an attempt to do that, um, there was an issue put out, well, as, as you saw on Leah's show probably, there was this issue from Pat and Annie Broker, we're going to you know, be loyal officers and they were going to take over and run the show, and then the next day David Miscavige ousted them. Had that not happened, and had David Miscavige, you know, there's a lot of different variable scenarios here, like, well, what would have happened to David Miscavige then? Or are we thinking maybe David Miscavige would have been ousted by the brokers if they had been put into power, right? Because he was running around being a little poison pill. But he was also the guy who at that time, back in 1986 when Hubbard died up to 1987 when that whole power struggle happened, Miscavige was the guy who was running the show. He was the executive director of Author Services International uh, or Author Services Inc., whatever, ASI, which was Hubbard's literary agent, but it was the, the place where all the money was when Hubbard was alive. That was where the royalties were going to. He was running that show. When Hubbard died, Miscavige realized that RTC, the Religious Technology Center, was the new base of power for Scientology, and that was the organization he needed to be in charge of. And that was why he went in there and kicked out Vicki Asneran and Jesse Prince and and installed him and his, um, you know, sycophants, uh, which was Marty Rathman, um, Mark Ingber, Mark Yeager, and Ray Midoff. Those were the guys who were working with Miscavige to oust the old regime of RTC, and, and they took over, and he then became the chairman of the board of Religious Technology Center. So, so if none of that had happened, and, and Annie just took over and Pat took over, what would Scientology be like? Well, I've said before that it didn't have to go the way that it went, and it could have been a kind or gentler Scientology. It's all really a matter of what policies you emphasize. And I don't know Annie Broker, so I don't know what policies she and operating patterns she would have emphasized. But what I do know is this. Hubbard's pattern of operation, the organizing boards, the, the executive structure, the corporate structure, the organizational structure, I kind of make this motion of like, you know, the structure as I laid out in the video called Scientology's Organizational Madness, I lay that whole structure out. And then I show how David Miscavige bypassed it and, and sort of undermined the entire thing. Had Annie Broker taken over that structure and tried to benignly run it, uh, according to Hubbard's best policies and the best possible interpretation of his policies, you would still have a built-in mechanism of defeat within the structure of the organization, as I laid out in that video, uh, which you'll have to watch because I'm not going to. I don't have the time to explain it all here. So, so, so Hubbard's policies just don't work when it comes to running an organization. And I imagine that had she taken over, she would have tried very, very hard to implement those policies in the way that Hubbard wrote them. And she would have found that it's a disaster. Um, now, Miscavige's solution to that was to just, you know, become a complete asshat and beat on people and, and you know, take out his frustrations on everyone and uh, just sort of single-handedly kind of try to run the whole show. Well, that's not very workable either. And you can see the results of that. Uh, the whole thing is tanking. Scientology doesn't need to be tanking. There's really no reason for it to be. There's plenty of oddball, goofy organizations out there that are 
totally successful <laughs> uh, despite their goofy organizational structure or bureaucracy or hierarchy of fools and all the stuff that goes on they still manage to make some money keep the doors open and 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 get new members in right so uh, there's I don't imagine that if Annie had taken over that there would have been beatings and you know morale won't him you know will <laughs> the beatings will continue until morale improves you know this kind of thing I don't, that wouldn't have been how she ran the show but I don't know that given Scientology's uh, disconnection policy given the fact that the Office of Special Affairs would still exist and their tactics would still be the same because they are based on Hubbard's dictates not wholly just Miscavige's, right? So unless Annie had just sort of sidelined OSA and sidelined disconnection as a practice and actually stuck up for the fact that that was not something to do and we're not going to be separating families and breaking up businesses and this kind of thing, unless she had taken those kind of measures, Scientology would still pretty much be in the same, you know, or a very similar place, I think, now that it, you know, that it is. So that's kind of my long-winded reasoning on all that. I could talk about this a lot more as far as all kinds of minutia of this, but bottom line is I don't think a benign ruler is uh, or leader was the solution that Scientology needed in order to not be the destructive cult that it is. It's simply, as I said from the very first video I ever made, uh, the destruction of Scientology is in its DNA. And there is no amount of leadership that's going to overcome that unless they turn it into something so different that it really isn't Scientology anymore, under, as, as L. Ron Hubbard described it. And that's my personal take on that whole thing.